Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects of the molecular biology in the course, uh, in, in the course molecular biology. So far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cell biology, we have discussed about the molecular biology, we have discussed about the uh, central dogma of molecular biology, we have discussed about the transcription, translation, replications, post translational modifications, we have discussed about the cell cycle, cell division, apoptosis and all other kind of aspects. And uh, apart from that we have also discussed about the different types of techniques what has been developed. So, we discuss about the polymerase chain reactions, real time PCR, blotting techniques, uh, we have discussed about the southern blotting, northern blotting and western blotting. And in the previous module, we have also discussed about the genome editing. So, uh, and we have discussed about the uh, different aspects of the genome editing in very briefly, we have discussed all this. So, with this, uh, we have discussed uh, in, in detail about all the tools and techniques which are available with the molecular biology. And now, it is a time to review, uh, to you see how these techniques can be utilized for the uh, welfare of the human society. So, what we have what we have discussed, we have discussed about that uh, molecular biology can be can have a extreme potential into the different fields. It can be used for the poultry industry, it can be used for the uh, agricultures, it can be used for generating the transgenic animals, it can be used for developing the recombinant proteins and so on. So, since the uh, scope is diversified, we decided that we will focus only on to the four aspects related to the molecular biology. We are going to discuss about the genetic engineering, we are going to discuss about the PCR based applications, we are going to discuss about the transgenic animals and we are also going to discuss at the end about the genome editing and how the genome editing can have the applications in the different types of era areas. Now, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the transgenic animals. So, transgenic animals. So, when we say transgenic animals, these are actually the animals where you are actually going to have the two different types of characters, two different types of uh, characters what are present. And transgenic animals are the animals where you are actually going to put the external DNA into the in, into the particular right. So, transgenic animal means you are actually going to put the genetic content from the trans which means from the outside and that is how it is actually going to modify the particular animal. So, what is the application of the transgenic animals? The application of transgenic animal is that it is actually going to be used for understanding a particular disease mechanism. So, we will take a few examples then you understand how the transgenic animals are utilizing for developing the different types of disease mechanisms. One of the classical example is the cancer for example. So, if a particular cancer is being developed because the particular type of trans uh, transcription factor is being required and it is actually over expressing in a large quantity. So, then what you can do is you can just over express that particular transcription factor into a particular animal and that ev animal is eventually going to develop the cancers of the breast or pituitary or any kind of thing. So, that can be used for, for studying the uh, how the cancer is being developed and that can also be used for the studying the uh, or exploring the uh, anti cancer drugs also. Then it also be can be used for studying the normal physiology. So, just like as we discussed for the cancer, it can also be used for studying how the blood clotting is working, how the, uh, the nerve conduction is working, how the uh, all the muscle contraction all those kind of. So, because all these mechanisms are requiring the different types of factors. So, if you remove one or two other factors, it can be help you. Uh, to understand what will be the role at that particular factor. For example, if you remove the actin and if you remove the myosin or if you remove the some crucial GTPases, it will tell you that okay, this is the function of this particular protein and that is how this is going to help you understanding the normal physiology. Then it also can help you in producing the biological products. So, biological product where you actually can produce or you can actually be able to generate a transgenic animals and that is good in giving you a particular desirable product. 
then it also can be used for vaccine development and it also can be used for the toxicity testing. For example, toxicity testing in, in those cases where you cannot test the particular product ex directly onto the human, but you can actually be able to develop the humanized animals, you can be able to develop the transgenic animals which are actually going to mimic the physiology of the humans but they are not humans and then you can actually be able to do the to toxicity testing in on those um, animals. So, as far as the transgenic animal is concerned, transgenic animals could be of two types. It could be an uh, animal where you are over expressing a particular gene or it actually can be a uh, transgenic animal where you are actually going to remove a particular gene. So, when you are over expressing a gene, you are expressing a gene into a suitable vector and these kind of any, uh, transgenic uh, animals are always being used for the organ transplant. Compared to that when you are doing the knockouts, uh, you are removing a particular gene expressing functional gene and uh, you, this is useful for understanding the role of that particular gene into a particular process. For example, cancer development, normal physiology and all that. So, first understand the disease mechanism. So, we will discuss about the transgenic animals and how they are being exploited to exploring the different types of aspects related to molecular biology or other biochemistry fields. So, first is uh, the transgenic animals which are being used for understanding the disease mechanism. So, you can actually have the disease model, you can have the disease model like conventional method where you are actually going to treat a particular animal with a uh, particular type of treatment and that is how it is actually going to have the conventional method. So, in the conventional method what will happen is that you are actually going to treat the animals with like for example, you can actually be able to treat an animal with a mutagenic compound. So, if that will happen then it is actually going to cause the mutations or you can actually be able to use the chemicals and that is how it is actually going to cause the, the development of a particular disease. For example, if you treat the rats with the streptomatozine, it is actually going to develop the uh, diabetes mellitus. Similarly, you can actually be able to use the some kind of uh, physical method. For example, you can actually be able to use radiation and if you radiate a particular organ, that organ is actually going to be disappeared and that is how you, are, you can be able to develop a disease model. For example, when people have discovered the diabetes, right? they actually re literally remove the pancreas of a particular uh, animal. So, when they, when they remove the pancreas from the dogs, they found that the dogs are developing the diabetes and that is how these are actually are the conventional method. What is the limitation of this? That limitation is that there will be no precise control. You are actually removing the pancreas. So, if you are removing the pancreas, you are not removing only one, you are removing a complete organ and that complete organ may have the uh, some more functions, right. It may just not have the function of reducing the insulin, it is also going to have the other kind of effects. Then it also going to cause the gross changes in the physiology, right. So, gross changes in the physiology, you do not know that if it is directly or indirectly affecting that particular process. Then it may contribution of the multiple organ. It could be possible that there could be a contribution of multiple organ in that particular process and uh, you may be just removing one organ or two organs and that is how. So, to avoid these kind of complications, people are developing the transgenic animals so that you can very precisely be able to say that okay, the effect of actin in this process is this effect of myosin is in this process is this. So, that is one of the advantage of developing the transgenic animals. So, genetically altered animals where you are either going to overexpress or knock out to resemble the signature pattern of a human disease conditions. Now, what is the major advantage of developing a transgenic animals? It is target specific gene site, you know that what gene you are trying to uh, you know trying to test right. So, you can actually be able to do that. There is no human subjects involved, then it is cheap and quick and it is reproducible. For example, for a disease model like AIDS mouse, Alzheimer mouse, Onco mouse, diabetes, zebrafish based uh, models and all that they are being developed. Then for example, the AIDS model right. So, 
no reported case of aids in the animals right so monkey can get only infected with the siv so first aids mouse model is skid mile uh, mouse right and the animal used for the model is rat cat rabbit and drosophila and what is the advantage of animal aids model it is actually cheap it is much is already known about their genes so you know that uh, this animal what is the uh, gen genetic makeup of this animal and so on so it is very difficult it is easy for you to decipher right and then let's talk about the another model which is called as the alzheimer's mouse right so it is a neurogenerative brain disorder which is where the amyloid plaque or the amyloid beta partic uh, peptides fragments of beta are actually going to be accumulated into the brain and the uh, APP mutation to induce the protein aggregation is the key to develop the AD mouse model right. So, TG2576 is a good transgenic mouse model to start with and in order to produce the genuine human amyloid. World's first Alzheimer mouse incorporated an APP mutations. The pathophysiological effect were similar in the transgenic mouse and it is comparable to the human. So, Alzheimer disease is a very very serious disease of the uh, central nervous system and it is actually going to be, uh, so you can actually be able to use these mouse model to screen the compounds, you can actually be able to use them for developing the new methods of developing the treatment and so on. And then we have the cancer mouse model. So, cancer mouse models are very very common for example, this is a nude mouse. So, to study the cancer formation and to screen the anti-tumor drugs, oncogenes are either mutated to induce the spontaneous cancer uh, formations, knockout of a tumor suppressor gene uh, for example, RB genes or the P53. Then you can also have the HER2 overexpression and that is also associated with the cancer formation. For example, the HER2 transgenic mice which is called FBB slash N dash MMT new mouse and there are 13 different types of strains which are being engineered to develop the uh, transgenic animals and those in transgenic animals are spontaneously going to develop the cancer. So, they, so they will uh, mimic the natural way of developing the cancer. Then we have a transgenic model for diabetes. So, for studying the gene and their role in peripheral insulin actions, the model of insulin secretion is the glucokinase and the beta receptor knockout mice, uh, uncoupling protein knockout mice and acute and chronic model for the anti-diabetic agents. Then we also have the zebrafish and the zebra transgenic zebrafish which is for the cardiovascular disease model. So, these are the some of the cardiovascular diseases for which the, uh, the uh, transgenic zebrafish model is being developed. And the uh, what is the major application of the transgenic animal? They are actually being used for understanding the disease mechanism, normal physiology. So, transgenic animals which are genetically engineered to produce a human a pharmaceutical product in their saliva, milk, urine or uh, blood. So, they are being called as farming. Transgenic animal produce the RPs or the uh, products for example, the milk for example, human antithrombin 3. Then we also have the chicken egg white. So, for example, the MAB and human interferon gamma NHS etcetera and insulin which is for the diabetes mellitus. And then we also have the production of vaccine into the transgenic animals like the growth factors, coagulation factors and lactoferrin and the infant formula feed. Then we also use the transgenic animals even for the organ transplant right. So, organ transplant you know that uh, you require a donor organ, a donor person you actually require a suitable organ so that it is matching with the acceptors and so on. So, that is a very very complicated process. So, and at the end you require a human being to give you the organs right. So, to avoid that you can actually be able to develop the transgenic animals so that you can develop a particular organ or you can actually be able to take directly from that particular transgenic animals. So, transgenic animals for the organ transplant. So, transgenic animals that are genetically modified to have organ that can be transplanted into the human do not express the key foreign antigen. So, you can actually be able to avoid the graft rejections, then promising the alteration to the human donors. P53 
pig is the animal used in this process so far why it is so because the pig is big in size thus the size of the organ what you are going to get from the pig is probably will be functionally active and the pig is actually very close to the human being so their physiology and their processes are going to be identical or almost similar to the human so that's why it is it is been accepted or so for example the porcine heart wall successfully transplanted into the human heart then its physiology is closer matching that of humans and that is one of the positive point of developing a transgenic animals especially the pig and it is much less expensive than the monkey and other primates so then it is called as super pig and it is fast growing and lean animals it express the bovine growth hormone so super pig is a transgenic animal which is been developed to de to gen to produce the bovine growth hormones then we have the super fish which are called as the aqua advantage salmon and these are the genetically modified atlantic salmon then we also have the gh regulating gene from the pacific uh, chinku salmon then we also have a smart mouse so smart mouse is a superior learning and memory and the doggy mouse so it is modified to over express the nrf nr2b transgene in the cortex and hippocampus and thalamus and brain stem and cerebellum so these are the you know the mouse which are actually having the higher iq values then uh, this is the transgenic animals and their advantages so these uh, one of the major advantage is that the gene requires certain cellular mechanism to help the production of protein the animal used to trans used for transgenic purposes naturally carry the mechanism needed to produce the complex protein this mechanism is absent in the cell culture so when you try to protein produce the protein in the cell culture it happens sometime that the protein what you are producing at the final stage may not be that much efficient compared to that the protein what you are producing in the transgenic animal because in the transgenic animal naturally it is getting into the another uh, the effect from the vicinity and because of that it is maybe more effective the expression to cell culture or bacterial culture require the constant monitoring and sampling right because you are supposed to feed the animals your uh, animal cells you are supposed to do all those kind of thing right whereas if you are developing a transgenic animals you are actually uh, animal will do all is that right a animal is going to supply the nutrient for the liver animal is going to supply the nutrient for all its organ right so that will be easier the isolation and the purification of express protein in a conventional method is more difficult than the purifying protein from the animal or milk from the body fluid so that is also one of the thing right if you are developing a transgenic animals you can actually be able to have the large quantity of that particular protein compared to that if you want to isolate that same protein from a uh, from a non transgenic animals it is more cost effective as product is efficiently passed through the milk on an average yield of 53% and a 99% purity it has been estimated that the transgenic animal can produce it uh, in its lifetime is uh, 100 to 200 million worth of the pharmaceuticals but apart from these the transgenic animals advantages you also have the several disadvantages for example the transgenic animal project is extremely expensive generation of transgenic animal is also expensive because of the long gestation period litter size and the higher maintenance cost of the recipient animals there may be a high mortality rate and other deleterious effect on the animal used by the researcher to create the transgenic breeds it has been observed that the transgenic pigs have enhanced the growth rate and efficient feed convention exhibit reduced reproductive performance and may suffer from the arthritis and the dermatitis large number of recipient is required to embryo transfer because of the low transgenic rate and the transgenic food that has been produced and better productivity in terms of both yield and quantity however there are some appreciation about the safety of the transgenic foods so one of the major challenge is that many people don't accept those product because they are coming from the transgenic animals right so there are ethical concern there are the Uh, social concern 
so that maple are not accepting these transgenic the product from the transgenic animals so these are the some of the advantages and as well as the disadvantages of the transgenic animals but molecular biology is being used extensively to produce the different types of transgenic animals and they are very very useful in terms of addressing the uh, or developing the disease models they are being used for developing the understanding the mechanism of a disease and as well as the normal physiology so molecular biology has an immense potential to provide the uh, uh, products for the so, uh, social welfare so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the molecular biology and we will we will we'll discuss how the molecular biology can be used for developing the different types of techniques based on the pcr techniques and as well as the genome editing techniques so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you mm -hmm.